Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I don't have time to actually go through every individual student's uh, responses to the Bruckner and Fisher review questions, like I did with the Nagel questions and the Epicurus questions. There's, things are just too, there's too many of them and uh, enough time to do that before um, you're going to be writing your module one essay. Uh, so instead of doing that, I mean, in lieu of that, I'd just like to just briefly uh, take a look at these review questions and give you a sense of what the correct answers actually are and so that you can compare them uh, with your own answers. Uh, what is the asymmetry problem? That is something I laid out in a particular video. I don't really have much to add to that. I don't think I have anything to add to that. But remember that basically the asymmetry problem is um, called the asymmetry problem because we treat prenatal and posthumous non-existence asymmetrically. That is, we give them different values, usually. And the Epicurean point of view is that we shouldn't. That is, both are just periods of non-existence. Um, so we should treat them symmetrically, but we don't. So the, the problem is the problem of, you would say, irrationality, that we're being inconsistent and irrational in giving these two periods of non-existence different values. Of course, an Epicurean would say that neither of them should have any value for us whatsoever. But basically, to be consistent, if we are indifferent to prenatal non-existence, then we should be indifferent to posthumous non-existence as well. So really, to solve the asymmetry problem would be to show that there's a good reason to treat them asymmetrically, that it's, in fact, not irrational to treat them asymmetrically. Number two, what does Parfit's first hypothetical suggest about our temporal bias with regard to bads? Well, with regard to suffering, at least, those kind of bads, um, it suggests that it's fully rational to prefer to have them in the past rather than in the future. That is, if we had our choice, we would want our bads uh, to be in the past. Uh, rather than to have them in the future. So it's fully rational to to want our bads to be in the past and um, to care more about bads in the future. This would seem to be a direct line, as I said in the videos, to solving a symmetry problem. How, however, the authors think that it doesn't help solve it because they believe that uh, the point about how we usually... Uh, prefer our bads to be in the past rather than the future only a, applies to experienced bads, things where we actually suffer. Their point is that we don't um, uh, have the same sort of temporal bias when it comes to unexperienced bads. And of course, that is under the conditions that we're, you know, we're, we're moving in with regard to this essay, that is what death is. Death is an unexperienced bad. And, and so, uh, this moves into question three. The authors suggest that with regard to unexperienced bads, we have no preference for them to be in the past or the future. That's the point of that hypothetical that Parfit gives about being given the news about your mother when you're exiled on some island. That when it comes to unexperienced bads, things that we recognize as being bad but are not experienced by us as bad, it turns out, according to the authors, that we have no preference. So this is a problem, obviously, for solving the asymmetry problem, because the, the bads of prenatal non-existence and the bads of posthumous non-existence, both of them deprivations of goods, um, are unexperienced bads. Uh, and so if we're going to be consistent, we should regard them, uh, uh, we should be indifferent, right? Because in general, we're indifferent to whether unexperienced bads are in the past or the future. So we should be indifferent to both uh, prenatal and posthumous non-existence. We shouldn't have, say that one's bad and one's not bad or we don't care about it because if we were gonna be consistent since they're unexperienced bads, we should, we should be indifferent to both of them. Um, so it's a problem for solving the asymmetry problem because, you know, it doesn't work because Parfit's example only really helps with experienced bads. So this leads to question four. 
uh, in their own solution to the asymmetry problem, the authors focus on pleasures and goods rather than bads. Why? Well, I take their solution to the asymmetry problem to be that we care more about posthumous non-existence because it will deprive us of future pleasures, whereas prenatal non-existence they regard as having deprived us of past pleasures. Since we prefer to have our pleasures in the future rather than the past, we care more about future pleasures. So we care more about the pleasures that we will be deprived of by posthumous non-existence than we care about the pleasures that we have been deprived of by prenatal non-existence. So that's really about it. I'm just really recapping the stuff that I said in the videos. So, um, but I, I won't have time to respond to uh, every single um, individual uh, submission for these questions. I hope that helped, but I would say that nothing I said in this video has not been said and probably been said more clearly in the videos for this reading. So uh, as you're preparing to write your, if, if you choose to write about this, uh, this topic uh, for your first essay, uh, please look over those videos. And also, obviously, for the final exam, where you'll have questions about this, uh, this reading, please refer to those videos. And of course, do, you know, look over the reading more closely.